Hi, I'm Elizabeth Exley with Gingham Trundle and I'm here today to do a short tutorial on wall art. One of the things that you need to do with wall art if you're going to be felting wall art is you need to have some sort of background. I like to wet felt pieces of fabric or sometimes old sweaters, something along those lines. Sometimes sweaters are too thick when they're wet felted. So basically I use um, fabric that then I felt, wet felt, you know, through the washer and dryer several times until it gets nice edges. I like these unfinished edges and I like the edges to, to be kind of pretty, the way that they look whenever they get felted. So I cut out my square. I don't, I sometimes felt, you know, maybe a couple of cycles through the washer machine and the dryer um, and I just throw it in with other stuff so that I don't end up using a whole bunch of um, extra energy and but then when I find when I realize what I'm going to make I'll go ahead and cut out the size that I want and then felt that again several times until I get the edges and everything as nice as I want okay so that's been done with this little piece and today we're going to be making a tree we want to take something that's going to be a nice trunk oh and look this shape is already such a nice little trunk shape down here at the bottom so I'm just going to cut off at the top like a kind of a little bit of a that just to be kind of the trunk shape and I don't love this shape exactly so I'm gonna just give it a little bit more movement here cut it out just a little bit more and then maybe give it a little bit of a root structure here at the bottom just just because that's what I like there so something along those lines you can make the you can make you can make it however you want obviously but this is just to give you an idea now for your felting needles when you're felting if you haven't ever done um haven't ever done wool fabric on top of wool fabric you generally have to start out with a pretty small needle because otherwise it just doesn't stay put the bigger needles just won't go through it because it's already felted too well and um, so when you're felting in something like this, you need to spend, you have to spend a lot of time felting it. And this one's actually probably too big. I probably need my bit smaller needle. So you have to felt this for a long time to get it attached. And as you can see, it's still not very well attached. I would spend a lot more time on that now. And then also I'm going to use other fibers to attach to, to help attach it. So this is just some regular wool. At this point, it doesn't really matter what you do. I just wanna get like a little bit of a shadow there on the side. My, um, my art is not super realistic. I just like to have a lot of different um, components on it. And so when you'll use, when you use um, just regular, you know, wool, that was, that was roving, um, I'm not sure what type that is when you use the regular wool it helps to adhere this fabric when you have the fabric to fabric and so I could use a little bit more on the other side but I'm probably not going to right now and if I wanted to I could take a piece some of this wool fabric that I use when you pull it apart when it's just the wet felted wool fabric you get really nice little edges so you can do things like attaching down here and get a little bit of um, you can get a little bit of grass and that helps adhere it because this fabric adheres better than this white stuff does, than this off-white stuff does. It just does. So I pulled that apart again, and I'm just gonna put some over here. So there is what I'm gonna leave that with. I may come back and add more later. I'll see if I like the way that it looks. Now for the top, I just want a shape, and this is, but I don't want because because of how I do it, I don't want the shape to be all the same. So I'm gonna take this piece, and I, I save all my little tiny pieces because um, I use them again. And so I'm just gonna do one side here, just kind of get the basic first side there. And then what do I wanna use on the other side? I have a variety of different greens, and so this is just batting. This was wool yarn that I used there. And so now I'm gonna take another little bit right here and we're gonna play with this shape over time. We're not, this is not anything that is, that has to stay this way. Okay, and so I'm gonna fill in that shape with other colors, depending on what I think I want. One thing when I'm using these colors is I like to use a little bit of like, this is like a rose, rose 
brown color. I don't know if it really shows up how pink it is. I still haven't finished out the shape the way that I want it, but that's okay because um, I will get it finished out. Now, when I'm doing this sort of piecing like this, I try to make sure that one section flows very closely into the next section. So see how I don't leave like a big chunk there. This has a little tiny, it just kind of melds in over there into that edge. That, is that the right word? I don't think it is. I want to finish up this side over here. Now orange, you might say, <laughs> but I like this orange. And this is again, just, um, this was batting. This is again a piece of, um, a piece of fabric that I have felted. I think that this is was an army blanket, something along those lines. And this one is also one of those that does not felt in as well. So you have to spend a lot of time and love getting it felted in and then you can put stuff over the top of it to help keep it down, okay? And now because this is like a big chunk here attached to this, I'm gonna use, pull a little bit of this green over and kind of, um, meld them together. I'm just going to keep, <laughs> I can't think of the word that I want to use there. So I'm going to use that for now. Okay. So now we have a little bit of, a, of a oval shape there. I may not want it to be so oval and we'll come back and we can just adjust the shape as, as I go. Okay. So now, as you see, I have this little thing here. It's a ceramic bowl that somebody made for me. And then I put all my extra cuttings in there. And that's really helpful because when I'm making other projects, then when I have something like this, where I want to use little tiny pieces, I have them. So this is a brown, and I'm just going to attach it right down here. I'm just going to do piece after piece. Now, even though this is a wet felted wool, it attaches really well to other wool. It just depends. It really just depends on the wool and what you have. Now, because this one attaches so well, I need a little bit bigger of a needle to attach it because it's attaching well, probably because its fibers aren't as well felted. So I have that there. I don't like this line over here, so I'm gonna adjust it eventually, but um, now I'm gonna take, I have some really pretty light green like it's like a mint green, I think it's called, whoops, it's called asparagus. So I'm gonna take some asparagus and attach it over here. And again, I'm just gonna make it go very gently over into that side and just kind of disappear over into that part. Instead, I'm gonna use a little bit of this 100% wool like sheet felt. This is from, I use a lot of the wool sheet felt in different things and Hmm. So I spend a lot of time when I'm making these trying to figure out where I want them, what kind of piece I want. And I do, I do this technique on a lot of different stuff um, just because I think it's really pretty to use the different pieces together. There, it fits perfectly right there. Now that 100% wool, like the sheet felt that you can buy, that felts in really well. You really don't have to worry much about that. Oh, and look, this is the little piece that I cut off when I was making that and it's gonna fit nicely right in there. So I'm just gonna attach it right there. So to do a picture like this, you have to kind of have a whole collection of pieces and a whole collection of all types of wool yarn because I like to have a lot of variation in something like this. And so there, I was not happy with that edge, so I'm gonna attach this over to the side. And again, I'm just gonna kind of make that disappear there under that orange. And that, when you're dealing with yarn, especially if it's a, a yarn that's really tight, you again have to use your smallest needles on this. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna add pieces for a long time. And this is a lighter color, and you would think that I wouldn't necessarily want it, but um, it when you have when you have kind of bright differences within the these pieces, they they're because they're so little, they don't show up that much, and they end up looking really really pretty. Now we need to do something up here at the top, and generally I like to do something like I don't like to make it exactly exactly. Um, straight up at the top. I like to make it kind of go over a little bit. 
So I may cut this a little bit and make some kind of little point over here. I'll show you what I mean. Just to get a better shape, a shape that I like a little bit more. But I don't like this shape either, so I'm gonna kind of do like that. Where I've made it have a little bit of a dip in on the side there, and I'm gonna bring this up and over. I don't draw anything before I ever start, so sometimes when I'm doing it, I just pull out a lot. And so I don't end up, most of the time when I'm felting anything, I don't felt anything, well, not a 3D sculpture, but I don't felt anything down too hard until I get closer to the end because I often end up pulling things out a little bit and changing the shape because I, liked, I like it to be able to change. So see, I like that shape better. There's a little bit more movement there. And, but this top part still does not look good to me. So I'm gonna take something up here. I'm just gonna take, nope. I'm gonna use this kind of light blue piece and attach these. That light blue piece is very not woven tightly, so I'm gonna use a different one. So I'm gonna come down and bring this on the inside here, and that's gonna ad help here adhere that orange piece down. Okay, so I like that shape better. Now, truthfully, if I were to do this again, I would probably bring a lot of that over and make it a little bit of a thinner shape, which I can do a little bit by felting in on the insides. Okay, now I'm gonna just, there, I end, up, I end up really liking that shape. You'll be able to see it better once I get it done. But I'm just going to keep adding. I'm gonna keep adding wool batting, wool roving, wool yarn, different types of yarn, like the um, wool fabric, and I'm gonna go um, piece by piece. Now, sometimes when I get to the middle of this, I don't want it to just look like I filled up this side and then I filled up this side. So to deal with that, I take a piece and kind of make a portion down the middle. Now, this is some of that stuff that's really hard to get attached, but it's gonna look good at the end. We're gonna make, we're gonna be adding shapes with that. And I want a little bit more of that pink over here. Because I really, I really like the way that that color looks in this piece. And I want a little bit more. Because see, I had pink up there, but I don't have any over here. So I kind of want this to help to just give a nice pop to this whole side. I'm just going to pull this up. And now I'm going to follow the shape of... this so that like I said that I don't end up just with circle a half circle over here and a half circle over here I want to give some differentiation in there I want it to to look like there are different shapes in a tree as there would be in a real tree See, I don't like how that line looks. That's too much of a line there, so I'm gonna I'll fill in something there. I just there's nothing wrong with it, it's just I don't like how it looks. And I'm gonna use some of this um, some of this fabric that I used for the grass. I'm gonna put it up here. And this one is a little bit too, it has a little bit too much of a straight edge there at the bottom. But I'll look and see if it would fit anywhere, if it would look like it would fit nicely somewhere. Maybe there. See, I'm here now I'm starting to cover up some stuff, but I really don't like the way that it 
edges up there so straight. Let's see. Okay, and I love this yarn, so I'm gonna use it again. I used it over here on the edge. It's just one of my favorite yarns. It has a lot of texture to it. And I'll probably use it in several more places now that I'm getting close to filling this in. And at some points I like to make like a little kind of oval like this to kind of say this isn't all about one side versus the other side there's there are some shapes within the tree Now I actually have a part in there that hasn't been filled in, so This is not completely done. I don't like the um, the trunk for it. The trunk is a little bit too big, and I might go. I might go back and just pull out part of the trunk and cut it. But I'll try to get it smaller. That's not the end of the picture. I will sp go through and spend quite a bit of time perfecting this making the trunk a little bit smaller, figuring out, because I don't like the way that that looks. And, um, but then when I get it finished to, to um, frame it or something along those lines, I just use glue, Elmer's glue, and I usually end up using a glue stick because it works better. Because then you can really get it on, you can adhere it. The glue works really well with the wool. I've never had any problems with that. I often put them um, in shadow boxes, but shadow boxes can be expensive, and so sometimes I get frames at um, at you know local flea markets, which obviously you can't do now. But in the future, get old frames, and then I take some kind of backing, some kind of fabric backing um, that matches it that I like, and I'll show some pictures of that at the end. Then I just glue this onto the fabric. And then sometimes I will just very lightly attach it with needle and thread just at the edges where you can't even see it, just to make sure that the glue holds it. But the glue makes it down, puts it down really nicely. And so when I put the glue on and put it on the fabric, I'll put a book on top of it and leave it overnight. And then the next day I just sew in a little bit around the edges sometimes. And then I know that lots of times I do writing on I'll put writing on my wall art as you saw in the first picture and to do that I've done a lot of different ways and the best way I found is to take some sort of white fabric okay this is doubled up so again I take my Elmer's glue and I glue two pieces of fabric together this is just plain white fabric if you use only one piece it shows through and it doesn't look as good you can't see the letters very well okay and then after I let this, you know, I cut out two pieces, I glue it together, I leave it, let it dry. Then after that, I can do my stamping on it. These are stamps that I messed up on, but I do stamping on it with just regular stamps, you know, regular stamps that have the letters or whatever you want to put on it. And I stamp those on and then I cut it out and then again, I glue. I glue it if I were going to put, you know, firmly planted or something right here. I wouldn't have room on this little tiny one, but 
I could put firmly planted on here. I would cut this white out. I'm not actually using this. I would glue it on right there. Again, I would leave it overnight. I would do this separate from attaching it to the other thing because you don't want to have so many elements gluing all at the same time. Glue this on, leave it overnight, and then again in the morning after it's after it's done, I would ta attach it with you don't you wouldn't have to, but usually you need to. Usually you need to attach it in the corners just by sewing it down. And I make those visible because I make them be kind of part of the work. And so thank you so much for joining me. I do um, online lessons and things like that a lot on Gingham Trundle if you're interested in more. And I hope to maybe do more here too. Okay, thanks. Bye.